Hey, how's it going guys? Colton Mush here with a $1,000 gaming PC build. This is a great build to buy if you're looking to run games at 1080p at really great settings and really great frame rates. It's a really solid build and it's going to be able to pretty much run any game at max settings at 60 frames per second. So with that being said, let's get right into this build. Starting things off with a CPU, I'm with the Intel Core i5 4690K 3.5 GHz quad core processor. This is about $230 and it packs great performance in gaming. It can also do things like video editing and rendering and live streaming, but at gaming, this thing's an absolute monster. Monster. The K in the 4690K obviously signifies that you can overclock this CPU, so if you want to pick something cheap like a Cooler Master Hyper 212 EVO up, you can get this CPU all the way up to say 4 gigahertz, and you're going to get even more performance out of this CPU. But this is just a great CPU and at gaming this thing's a complete monster, it's going to run through any game if paired with a good graphics card, which we have in this build, so this is a great CPU for this build. Moving on to the motherboard, I went with the Gigabyte GA-Z97X-SLI ATX LGA1150 motherboard. This motherboard isn't crazy expensive. It's $115, which is a decent price, but you're getting a lot of features out of this. You can go for an SLI configuration if you want. It's got four memory slots capable of up to 32 gigabytes of RAM if you want. And like I said, it's got Crossfire and SLI support. It's a motherboard from Gigabyte, and they have a decent warranty policy. So this was an all-around winner, in my opinion. And since it is Z97, you can overclock on this motherboard as well. So this is just a great motherboard. Highly recommended. Like I've said in the past, Gigabyte has a lot of great motherboards, and this one definitely falls in line. Just loaded with features and at a relatively good price of $115. Moving on to the RAM, I went with G-Skill Ripjaws X Series 8GB, 24GB sticks running at 1600MHz. Not much more to say about this, you can get this RAM for around $59 to $60, so pretty good price. 8GB of RAM seems to be the norm these days on most builds. Like I said, the motherboard does have 4 RAM slots, so if you want to go for a 12-16GB configuration in the future, you can go for that, but right now that just doesn't make a lot of sense. 8GB is definitely enough to run any game that comes out, and most games these days are recommended recommending 8, but say 16, 18, 24 months down the line, you do want to go for a 16 gigabyte configuration, that option is open, but for now, 8 gigabytes is more than enough. Moving on to storage, I went with the Western Digital Caviar Blue 1TB 3.5 inch 7200 RPM as your mass media device. You're going to store all your big games, your movies, your pictures, all your mass media onto this hard drive. For the SSD, I went with the Kingston HyperX 3K 120GB 2.5 inch solid state drive. This SSD is stupid cheap right now. $70 for 120GB solid state drive is stupid in my opinion. It's just a great deal and Kingston HyperX 3K, yes it is an older model, but it's still really, really solid. On this SSD, SSD, you're going to keep your OS and your key applications and games. Games like Battlefield 4, Skyrim, those games tend to have longer load times, especially Skyrim, I've noticed. If you keep it on an SSD, those load times get shrunk in half or even more in some cases, and the OS is going to boot up a lot faster. The SSD is just going to keep your PC running a whole lot smoother, but you're still going to have the Caviar Blue 1TB for all your mass storage, since at the end of the day, 120 gigabytes is not enough. Moving on to the video card, I went with the MSI GeForce GTX 970 4GB Twin Frozer video card. It's around $330 right now. Great GPU. The GTX 970 is an absolute monster. Throw that 3.5GB thing out the door for a second. At 1080p, this is one of the best GPUs you can buy right now at a really solid price. You're going to be running games like Battlefield Hardline, Battlefield 4, Elder Scrolls Skyrim with mods, and all the higher end games, Shadows of Mordor, Dying Light, all those games at 1080p, max settings at 60 frames per second or higher in most cases. And you can also overclock this GPU if you want. It's got a great cooler as well, so if you want even more performance out of it, you can get that as well. But the GTX 970 is just a great GPU right now. At 1080p gaming, at this kind of price range, there's no card that really comes close to it in terms of performance, and it's just a great GPU. I highly recommend it. I have a 970 myself in my main PC. It works great, and if you're looking to run, you know, the latest games at 1080p at 60 frames per second at the highest settings, then this GPU is really solid, and it's not too expensive either. $330 is a decent price for a GPU that's capable of the kind of performance that the 970 is capable of. For the power spot, I went with the EVGA Supernova Next 750 watt 80 plus bronze certified semi modular power supply. It's semi modular, so this is going to keep your case a lot cleaner. It's going to keep cable management really easy. And 750 watt is a lot more than necessary to power this build. I just got the 750 watt. We could fit it in. And it's going to leave you able to do a lot of upgradability options if you want. But semi modular, it's a solid power supply. $74. It's bronze certified. It's from EVGA. They're, they have a great warranty policy as well. Really solid power supply. You can even get like a 650 or 600 watt power supply if you want. I just got the 750 watt since this was something we could fit in. So it's a solid power supply and it is semi-modular which like I said it's going to keep the case a lot cleaner. 
Speaking of the case, and finally for the case, I went with the NZXT S340 White ATX Mid Tower case. This is an awesome case for around $65. It's got a real clean look to it. I like it. It's simple. It's got the side window, which I know everybody, you know, that's subscribed to me absolutely adores. So this is a great case for $65. NZXT has a wide array of great cases, and this one definitely is one of them. It's got a lot of room for upgradability. It's going to keep cable management real well with the semi modular passby that I picked for this build as well. And it's just a great case. A lot of ventilation, a lot of room for cooling, and looks really clean on the side window, of course, is one of my favorites. So this is a great case from NZXT, the S340, for around $65. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Remember to hit that subscribe button, like this video, comment with your requests and questions for future videos. If you guys have anything to say, leave them in the comments down below. I read every single one of them, so thanks for watching, guys, and I will talk to you all later. Peace.